What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today I'm going to be doing part two of my Rebel Clash set review due out May 1st. This review is going to include all of the cards from Japan's Rebellious Clash set. But before I get to the review, let's head on over to FullGripGames.com. If you're looking for a little bit of extra cash in your pocket, it's never been a better time to sell your cards to Full Grip Games. If you head on over to our website, you can click on the Buy List tab up here in the top left corner, and it'll take you to our Buy List page where I've got a video explaining how to submit a Buy List with us if you've never done it before. But it's pretty simple. You just fill out the Buy List with the cards that you want to sell to us and submit it. We approve your Buy List, you send us the cards, and we send you the cash. Shopping with Full Grip Games directly supports the content that I create here on Tricky Gym. So thank you all so much to everybody who's continued to support Full Grip Games. Let's get on with the video. We're going to kick things off with Eldegoss V. Eldegoss V has an incredible ability, Happy March, which reads once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to your bench, you may put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. Think Tapu Lele GX combined with Versus Seeker. And now we have Eldegoss V, an incredible card with great tank ability for a utility Pokemon at 180 hit points and a nice retreat cost of one. So if you happen to start it, it's not that big of a pain to get it out of the active position. And with the release of Boss's Orders coming out in our upcoming Rebel Clash set, Eldegoss V is going to be seeing a ton of play to get that Gust Effect supporter back from the discard pile for a game winning play. Eldegoss V easily fits into any deck running the Quick Ball engine and is quick ball searchable, meaning that you can turn your quick ball into a supporter card so long as you have one in the discard pile very easily. I expect Eldegoss V to see a lot of play and it's going to increase the consistency of a lot of decks. As it turns out, both of Applin's evolutions from Rebel Clash are pretty good. Clapple has an ability Apple Drop, which reads once during your turn, you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon, then shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck. If it wasn't for that second part there, this card would be really good. However, I still think there's ways to make this work, especially in spread decks, which are gaining a lot of popularity in standard right now. One of my favorite decks is the Roxy's Catterday deck, which uses the Roxy's engine to spread damage counters onto the opponent's field, and then Esper to deal snipe damage to the opponent's bench. Flapple helps fix math for Esper by dealing damage counters onto the opponent's field, and then shuffles itself back into the deck, which helps prevent you from decking out, and Flapple can easily evolve from Ditto Prism Star, which the deck already runs. So I'm looking forward to see what kind of creative combinations players will come up with for this Flapple card. It's the kind of card that makes you wish Force of Giant Plants was still around. However, I still think it's pretty good good and there's going to be somebody who makes it work. Up next is Ninetales V. Now Ninetales V has a lot of competition as far as fire type attackers go. There is definitely no shortage of them and fire is one of the most powerful types in our standard format right now. So Ninetales V definitely has its work cut out for it, but I thought I'd talk about the card because of its first attack here, Ninetailed Transformation, for a fire and two colorless. Allows you to choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. So it's pretty cool because it's a copycat style attack that has no limitations. It doesn't matter if your opponent used a GX attack, you could still copy it with Ninetailed Transformation. So I like that. It's a manageable attack cost as well for just three energy. And then for a fire and three colorless, you could deal 180 damage and discard an energy from this Pokemon. So some nice vanilla damage output there. So you're not just pigeonholed into using Ninetales for that copycat style attack there with Ninetailed Transformation. And I think Ninetales definitely carves out a niche for itself, giving fire type decks, welder decks, the option to copy one of the opponent's attacks while promoting a Pokemon that has 200 hit points and only gives up two prizes instead of three. I think Ninetales could be good for copying powerful GX attacks or uh, big attacks from Pokemon VMAX as well. As the format grows, we'll see how powerful Ninetales becomes. There is a new Lampant in town. It's got an ability which allows you to put into play instantly from the top of your deck, if you're lucky enough to draw it, as your top deck for turn, which is pretty interesting. So if you're into the Spirit Burner Chandelier deck, which uses Dust Stone to instantly evolve your Lampant up into a Chandelier, there is a way that you could get 
a turn one chandelier. However, you'd have to get pretty lucky in order to pull that off. That being said, there are some ways to finagle your top deck. You could use the Primate Wisdom Oranguru. You could use Magcargo from Celestial Storm. And there are a few other evolution cards from Rebel Clash, which have this kind of ability. So I thought I'd mention it a little bit and talk about it. it does sound a little wombo combo-y to me, and I'm not exactly sure how much play it's going to see. However, I thought it was cool. So if you're into the Spirit Burner Chandelure deck, yeah, shoot your shot. At first glance, Melodic V might not seem like too much worth talking about. It's a water type Pokemon with 210 hit points and two seemingly mediocre attacks. Its first attack for a water and two colorless Aqua Impact deals 10 damage plus 50 more damage for each colorless in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. And then Hypno Splash for a water and three colorless deals 150 damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Now Aqua Impact in the context of Rebel Clash though is actually a pretty good attack since there is the new Galar Mine Stadium coming out in the set which I'm going to talk about later. However, it increases the retreat cost of both active Pokemon by two, meaning that your Melodic would be pretty hefty with a retreat of four. However, it's going to be dealing a lot more damage to the defending Pokemon. So with a Galar Mine in play, if your opponent has a retreat cost of two, it means they're going to have a retreat cost of four, and you're dealing 210 damage for just three energy. Now, if you add a couple of Absols from Team Up onto your bench, now all of a sudden, a Pokemon with a retreat of two naturally, with Galar Mine, retreat of four, with two Absols, retreat of six, you're dealing 310 damage for just three energy, and that is certainly an attack worth talking about. Now, the question question is, how easy is this all going to be to get into play? And the attack cost is not necessarily easy to negotiate either. Of course, you could set up Frost Moth and rain some water energy into play with the Ice Dance ability, but then that's one more thing to set up in addition to your Melodic V, your Galar Mine Stadium, your couple of Absols, and then the Frost Moth too. That might be a little bit too much to set up. However, I think the potential is there, and it's certainly a card worth thinking about. There is a lot of competition amongst lightning type attackers. However, Toxtricity V and Toxtricity V Max definitely stand out as potent attackers in their own right. Toxtricity V has 210 hit points, good bulk for a two prize Pokemon, and two pretty decent attacks. Poison Jab for a lightning deals 20 damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now poison, so an effective 30 damage and a poison which could keep ticking. And then Electric Riot for two lightning and a colorless deals 90 damage plus 90 more if the defending Pokemon is inflicted with poison. So you could use Poison Jab and then the following turn Electric Riot for 180 damage or you could use Koga's Trap as your supporter for turn to inflict confusion and poison and then skip right to Electric Riot for 180 damage. Toxtricity VMAX gets a healthy HP bump, 320 HP, and the same attack cost, two lightning and a colorless to deal 160 damage plus 80 more damage if your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned. So that means 240 damage, wow, for just three energy. The energy is pretty easy to get into play as well with Tapu Koko Prism Star, Thunder Mountain Prism Star to decrease your attack cost and the new Bolton V, plenty of ways to accelerate energy into play. 240 base damage if your opponent's active Pokemon is already poisoned. So that means if they're already poisoned, that's 250 damage. If you have maybe Hypnotoxic Laser and Verbank in expanded format, you could be dealing some magic numbers here, right? With Hypnotoxic Laser, you can automatically inflict poison and you can use the Verbank City Stadium to increase that poison damage, meaning you're hitting 270 damage with your Giganto Riot. In standard, of course, there is the Kogos Trap. There is the Toxtricity V, which we already saw. So some pretty cool combos to pull off with this card. And then Electro Power can take it to even bigger heights as well. 240 base with Electro Power. Just one gets you that 270 damage you want as well. And then with Poison, you're getting that 280 number, which means you're knocking out Arceus, Dauga, and Palkia. I think that this card could be the center of a new lightning archetype, and I'm excited to see what players come up with.
Let me start off by saying I love Clefable's new psychic typing here. Clefable, you look great in purple. Now, Clefable's ability, playful, is maybe not so playful if you're the one playing against it. It reads, once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to evolve a Pokemon, you may choose an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon and return it to the top of your opponent's deck. Now, with the new Scoop Up Net item card being released in Rebel Clash as well, which I'm going to talk about later, it means that there is an easy way to read use and recycle this playful ability, meaning that you could conceivably remove multiple energy from the opponent's active Pokemon, returning them all to the top of your opponent's deck. Now, what do you do with the energy once they're on the top of your opponent's deck? Maybe you Belelba and Bryson Man and send it right to the discard pile. Combined with Crushing Hammer, Clefable could prove to be a potent energy denial threat. Dragapult V and Dragapult V Max, both great psychic type attackers with a dark type weakness, which is really bad in expanded format, and probably one of the best weaknesses you can have in standard format. Sorry, not sorry, dark box players. Now, Dragapult V's main job is going to be to evolve into Dragapult V Max. However, it's got some pretty decent attacks. Bite for one psychic deals 30 damage, and then for two psychic assault jet deals 60 damage plus 80 more. If this Pokemon went from being on your bench to your active position during your turn so 140 damage clean one hit ko on a psychic week mewtwo and mew tag team gx just like galisopod gx there with its first impression style attack Dragapult VMAX is an awesome Pokemon card, which I'm sure a lot of people are stoked about considering Dragapult seems to be one of the fan favorites from the Sword and Shield games. Dragapult's rocking 320 HP, which is quickly becoming the new normal for Pokemon VMAX and two great attacks. His first attack, Shred, deals 60 damage for just one Psychic Energy and is not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. Great for getting through barrier style effects and things like that and a welcome addition to this card, but not really the thing that we're going to be talking about. Giganto Phantom for two Psychic Energy deals 130 damage and you get to place five damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. In any way you like, which is crazy. This combo is great with cards that are already being played in Malamar decks. Giratina from Lost Thunder, Ping's Damage, Spell Tag, Ping's Damage. And this all gets through Mew from Unbroken Bonds, meaning that there's no way to protect your bench Pokemon from a Dragapult V Max. Jirachi's easily get gobbled up by this thing and i love that you get to place the five damage counters on your opponent's bench pokemon in any way you like meaning that you don't have to waste damage counter placements you could deal five to a jirachi one turn then two the next turn and three to something else nothing is safe on the bench from dragapult v max now, it is not a good time to be a fighting type Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game right now, and it's not a good time to be a stage 2 Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game right now. That being said, Colossal's Tar Generator ability is very good, and if there's ever any support for this type of Pokemon, then maybe Tar Generator starts to see some play. It reads, once during your turn, you may search your discard pile for up to one fire energy and one fighting energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. So it's like Rillaboom except instead of getting the energy out of the deck, you get them from the discard pile. So it's a great recharge style ability, kind of like Malamar, but two, one for fire and one for fighting. And you're not limited to attaching these energy to your bench Pokemon like Malamar is. You can put them wherever you want. So Colossal's ability could power or be the backbone of a substantial fighting and fire deck. What that deck is or could be might not be clear yet, but maybe there comes a Pokemon down the line that could really take advantage of this tar generator ability. I just don't think that Pokemon exists yet. Phalanx V might seem like a weakling at first with only 160 HP, which is not much for a two prize Pokemon. However, its ability Iron Defender has the opportunity to change that. It reads, as long as this Pokemon is in play, damage done to any of your Pokemon with Phalanx and its name by your opponent's attacks is reduced by 20. So with four Phalanx V in play, you could decrease damage done to your Phalanx by 80, which is pretty good, giving you an effective 240 HP. And its attack, Giga Impact, deals 210 damage for two fighting and a colorless with the added effect of this Pokemon cannot attack during your next turn. So it seems pretty similar to Zacian V. However, we don't really have all of the support. The Zacian V boat. Zacian has Arceus Dalgopalkia. Zacian has Metal Saucer. Phalanx V is a fighting type Pokemon which has some of the least support in the game right now. But maybe if things start to go a little bit better for fighting type Pokemon in the future, Phalanx V could be a star in those days decks. 
Galarian Weezing joins the club of ability lockers in Rebel Clash with its chemical change gas ability. It reads, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, each of your opponent's Pokemon has no abilities. So it's one way ability lock, which we love to see. However, you have to be in the active position in order for that ability lock to stay in effect. It's got an attack, severe poison for one darkness energy. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned and you place four damage counters for poison between turns, which can quickly add up. However, a lot of switch cards are being played in standard right now. And with the introduction of a new gust supporter, there are gonna be more ways than ever to get around the chemical change gas. And I think that with Arceus, Dagopalkia, Zashi, and V being the best deck in format, it doesn't really rely on abilities that much in order to set up. So I think that as far as ability locks go, chemical change gas is one of the weaker ability lock abilities we have available to us in the Pokemon trading card game, and I don't think that Galarian Weezing, unfortunately, is going to see a lot of play. Unfortunately for Dark Box, I don't think Malamar V or Malamar V Max are it at all. Malamar V's got 210 hit points, which is pretty normal these days for a two prize Pokemon and two attacks. His first for a dark and a colorless drag off. You get to choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and switch it with their active Pokemon. This attack does 30 damage to the new active Pokemon. Is this going to be an attack effect we really need in a format with bosses orders? Probably not. And then the unfortunately named Brain Shake, which I'm sure we are not going to be seeing in our English set for two dark and a colorless deals 130 damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Malamar VMAX has 310 HP, which at this point is on the lower end of the spectrum as far as VMAX hit points go, and one attack, Giganto Jammer. For two dark and a colorless, deals 180 damage, and your opponent reveals their hand. You get to choose a card you find there and put it onto the bottom of your opponent's deck. With a grass weakness and just 180 damage for three energy, unfortunately, I think that Malamar VMAX falls a little bit short and is just outclassed by cards like Trevenant and Dustnor, Tag Team GX, who has the backing of Psychic Support and also gets to take two cards from your opponent's hand and put them back into the deck. Kaparaja V and Kaparaja V Max are big metal elephants. So they've got a lot of HP and do a lot of damage and are going to be a welcome addition to the already strong metal type Pokemon that we have in standard right now. Kaparaja V has two attacks. Its first one, Adamantine Press, for two metal and a colorless, does 90 damage, and it takes 30 less damage from attacks during your next turn. And then the second attack for three metal and a colorless, Rackdown, deals a nice vanilla 180 damage with 200 20 HP. Kaparaja V is not necessarily spectacular, certainly not better than Zashian V. However, it does evolve, which is great because Zashian V does not and doesn't have a great way to hit into Obstagoon. Would you just take a moment to stand in awe of this gigantic metallic elephant? What a wonderful creature. 340 HP, rivaled only by the likes of Snorlax VMAX in the Pokemon trading card game right now, and two great attacks as well as all of the support that Metal Pokemon inherit, like Metal Saucer and, of course, Arceus, Dauga, and Palkia. Dangerous Nose for two metal and a colorless deals 100 damage plus 100 more if the defending Pokemon is a basic Pokemon, and let's be honest, they're always basic Pokemon. So, basic 200 damage for three energy very good damage output to energy cost ratio and then giant hammer for three metal and a colorless deals 240 damage in the context of rcs Dalgapalkia and ultra creation gx we start to see some magic numbers pop up we've got dangerous nose that can swing for 230 damage into a zashi and v taking a one hit ko while also not being able to be one hit ko by zashi and v in return that shrine of punishment does nothing to kaparaja v max and brave blade it just doesn't get there. So great trades with Zacian V and then Giant Hammer can deal 270 damage, which easily one hit KOs most of the tag team Pokemon GX that you're going to encounter in the Pokemon trading card game. So it really hits some key numbers while also not being KO'd in return by some of the most popular attackers. It does have a pretty gnarly fire weakness, which does make it susceptible to welder type decks, but metal Pokemon are just going to have that problem anyways. And I think the copper Raja V Max is a great inclusion, helps you get around Obstagoon as well, and could see a lot of play in our upcoming format.
Scoop Up Net is one of the most anticipated item cards out of our upcoming Rebel Clash set, and it's easy to see why. It allows you to put one of your Pokemon, excluding Pokemon V or Pokemon GX, into your hand, and you discard all their cards attached to that Pokemon. It's like an AZ, the supporter card we typically see played in expanded format, except in item form with some limitations. Now, I know that stall and mill players are really hyped on this card. It allows you to pick up Pokemon EX, which are notably expanded. Excluded. So you can pick up your Seismitoad EX if you want to. You can pick up your Waylord EX if you want to for free, which is pretty cool. And you don't have to use it as your support of return, but it also allows for some pretty annoying uh, reusable combinations like the Clefable that I talked about. You could reuse the Paralyzing Raichu like we see in Shock Lock decks in expanded format. It also allows for Doll Stall decks to bounce Pokemon, maybe that they're done using back to the hand, typically in expanded format. Those Doll Stall decks rely on AZ. Now they also have Scoop Up Net as an item-based option to pick Pokemon up out of play, leaving their board with only Dolls to deal with. Now, this could be an annoying card to play against, and I anticipate that it is probably just going to be so. Tool Scrapper is back. Now, hopefully you didn't go ahead and bulk all your Tool Scrappers from Dragon's Exalted when Field Blower was printed like I did. Tool Scrapper is an awesome item card that allows you to remove up to two Pokemon tool cards from either player's Pokemon. Great for getting around spell tags, big charms, metal frying pans, and the like. It could even remove escape boards from Jirachis before a late game reset stamp. I think this card's going to see a ton of play and finally gives us an alternative to Lysander Labs as far as negating tool effects. If you've ever wondered to yourself, what do Palisand Shovels do? Well, I've got an answer for you. Cursed Shovel is a Pokemon tool card from Rebel Clash that reads, if the Pokemon this tool is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. So a great utility card for mill decks. You can imagine Cursed Shovel attached to an Oranguru, put it on a Lily's Polka Doll, put it on your Minginos, doesn't matter, helps to mill your opponent's deck. Now, fortunately, we do have Tool Scrapper to help get around the Curse Shovel, but Curse Shovel is a pretty good card, and if you're going to make your opponent dig for the Tool Scrapper, then you're kind of accomplishing your goal anyway. Oleana is a new supporter from Rebel Clash that allows you to discard two cards from your hand. In order to have your opponent reveal their hand, you get to choose a trainer card you'll find there and put it at the bottom of your opponent's deck. Now, this card could see a lot of play in hand control decks like Pidgeotto Control or Cinchino Control, as most of them are operating as now. Instead of having to reset stamp your opponent's hand to low and then Mars cards away and use Chip Chip Ice Axe from there, you could just Oleana their hand to get the one live card out of their hand, the one card you don't want them to have access to, and then start the Chip Chip Ice Axe loop from there. So Oleana definitely has a unique effect for these control decks, and I'm sure that many of them will play it. That's right, guys. Supporter-based Gust is back in the form of Giovanni with Boss's Orders. It's a supporter that allows you to choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and switch it with their active Pokemon. A classic Gust effect that dates all the way back to base set with Gust of Wind. The effect has been reincarnated a number of times, including Lysander from Flash Fire, which saw a lot of play. And now we've got Boss's Orders. I love the artwork on this card and happy to see Giovanni getting some representation in the Pokemon trading card game again. I think this card is going to have a gigantic impact on standard format in the Pokemon trading card game. I think it's going to completely replace custom catchers and Pokemon catchers that a lot of decks are playing right now. I do still think Great Catcher may still see some play and will definitely continue to see play as an item-based gust effect in expanded format. However, for the most part, I think decks are going to be relying on boss's orders as their primary gusting option since it's consistent and it's searchable from the discard pile with Eldegoss V. So you can play a handful of boss's orders in your deck. I think that most decks are going to play three or four of this card and also Eldegoss V to get them back as maybe a fourth or fifth or even sixth 
copy of boss's orders because having gust is just that powerful so thankfully we've got some way to counteract all of the support that doll decks have gotten in standard format as of late and i'm sure a lot of decks will love having this guaranteed gust option at their disposal this thing's going to be played in just about everything and i am very excited about it the Galar Mine was one of my favorite areas in the Sword and Shield video game, so I'm stoked to see this area recreated as a powerful stadium card from our upcoming Rebel Clash set. It makes it so that the retreat cost of each active Pokemon, both yours and your opponent's, is two colorless more. We already talked about Melodic V in this stadium helping to boost its damage output to really insane numbers, up over 300, with the help of Absol from Team Up. I think this card is also going to help out Tangrowth, which did see some marginal success earlier in the year and is all around going to be a great card to help slow down Jirachi from team up which sees a ton of play. Lightning Pokemon are good, drawing cards is good, so Speed Lightning Energy is probably pretty good as well. It's a special energy card that reads, this card provides one Lightning Energy when it's attached to a Pokemon, and when you attach this card from your hand to a Lightning Pokemon, you get to draw two cards. I think this card is going to be a welcome addition to the already strong support that Lightning Pokemon have, and it's probably going to see a decent amount of play. Horror Psychic Energy is a special energy card that provides a psychic energy, and the added effect is that when it's attached to a psychic Pokemon, that Pokemon will deal two damage counters to the defending Pokemon whenever it takes an attack. My initial impressions with this card is that it's not going to be as powerful when paired with Giratina from Lost Thunder in those traditional Malamar decks, since the Giratina usually just goes down in one hit, limiting the usefulness of the Horror Psychic Energy. We already got spell tags for Giratina, and this energy cannot be psychic recharge, limiting its usability in those decks. Now, I think that this card could pair really well with a Pokemon that maybe has over 300 HP, maybe that is going to be taking multiple hits. I'm looking at you, Dragapult VMAX. I think that Dragapult VMAX would love Horror Psychic Energy attached to it, since it only deals 130 base damage with its attack and then gets to snipe five damage counters to the opponent's bench. I think the Horror Psychic Energy can help make up for that lack of damage output to the defending Pokemon and can be very annoying to play against since the Dragapult VMAX will take multiple hits from most Pokemon in order to go down. You know, I say this all the time, but it's still true. Free search in the Pokemon trading card game is really good, and Capture Energy provides just that. It's a special energy card that provides one colorless energy when it's attached to a Pokemon, and the added effect is that when attaching this card from your hand to one of your Pokemon, you get to search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. Setup decks are going to love this card, and I'm personally really excited that setup decks are getting a little bit of a boost with the help of Capture Energy. In fact, any deck that likes to attach energy from hand to its Pokemon and also get its Pokemon out of the deck and onto the bench is going to like capture energy, and I think that's, uh, well, yeah, most decks for you. And that just about does it for my review of Rebel Clash. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you missed part one, make sure to go back and check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Also, make sure to check out FullGripGames.com for all your trading card game singles, as well as FullGripCodes.com for instant Pokemon trading card game online code delivery. If you haven't already, I stream Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday live Live on Twitch. So make sure to join us over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tricky gym. It's a ton of fun and we got a great community over there on Twitch that is very welcoming. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to drop the video a like, sub to the channel, and ring that bell. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy. Peace.